Now, when I say batteries in cars these days, I could easily mean a giant battery that runs a car, but not in this case. We're going mainstream, the battery that we all deal with. This big, nasty, heavy, big old black lead box that you never think about until it dies. And then you think about it laced with obscenities. So when you have to go buy one, you need to understand a little bit about its parameters. Now, the first thing you're going to have to learn about or encounter in batteries is something called the group number. It's the first thing they ask you at the parts counter. A group number tells you a lot of things. This is a group 24 battery here. This is a group 75. It's actually physically smaller, so that's a little counterintuitive. What the group number tells you is a combination of width, length, and height of the physical battery case. It also tells you where the terminals are located. This is a top terminal battery. This is a side terminal battery. The places where you attach the cables are on the side. The other thing group number includes in it is the polarity. This is positive, this is negative, but they could be opposite in a different group number. And that's very important because a car's cables that go to the battery are a fixed length and you can't just stretch them to move around. Positive's only gonna reach to the positive, so the polarity, the posts, have to be in the right place for each cable. Now, by the way, group numbers were devised by something called the Battery Council International. It's a trade group for battery makers. As a result, you might also see the group number referred to as the BCI number, like we see on this one. Same thing. Now, the next thing you need to know is the power of the battery, to put it in common parlance, and that's usually expressed in amps. That's what really matters, because the voltage is the same. These are all 12-volt batteries, unless you have a very old car that uses a 6-volt battery, but we're talking vintage rides, probably pre-mid-60s at the most recent. So, 12-volt battery, but how many amps does it have, which tells you how much oomph it has to turn over your engine. Now, you find that measured in two main ways, cranking amps and cold cranking amps. Cranking amps are tested in the lab at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's considered cool, but not cold. Cold cranking amps are tested in the lab at zero degrees Fahrenheit, which more simulates really harsh winter weather. And there's a big difference. Batteries perform much less stoutly in very cold temperatures. And as a result, when you look at the cranking amp versus cold cranking amp number on a battery, it's gonna be quite different. The more cranking amps, the better, within reason. Uh, it won't hurt your starter. Your starter will only draw as many amps as it can use in a given situation. Then again, more amps equals more cost. Okay, our last consideration is construction and chemistry inside the battery. Now, your conventional black square battery like this is probably what's called a lead acid battery. It's got sheets of lead suspended in it that are in a bath of acid. It's water and sulfuric acid, and those two combined, when the circuit is closed between the plates inside, creates electrical current. That's about as far as my chemistry goes. By the way, a battery is actually six batteries. Inside here are six separate cells. Each one puts out two volts or so. That gets you 12 volts. Now, a variant on the lead acid battery is an AGM, or absorbed glass mat battery. It takes that fluid, that solution, and absorbs it into typically some fiberglass sheets and beds those down next to the plates that create the electricity. And those can be flat, or as you can tell from this battery, they can also be wound up in coils and held that way. Again, still six assemblies, two volts each, 12 volts total. Benefits to an AGM battery is they can't leak because there's not anything sloshing inside. They tend to be very good about recharging quickly. They're very good about resisting vibration for cars that are off-road or performance cars. That's very important. And they tend to have a longer life when they're called upon to start a car very frequently. On the downside, they tend to be substantially more expensive and they're very sensitive to overcharging if there's anything wrong with your charging system or an external charger you attach to them. Now, another variant of battery you'll see that is typically not used in cars, but you'll see it sold right alongside these, is what's called a deep cycle battery. A deep cycle battery will give you a lower number of amps, so less current, but it can put out power for a longer time and it can bounce back from being drained much better many times. These are used not so much for starting, but deep cycles are used for running things. So think RVs and boats, as opposed to car engine starts. Now frequently you're shopping for a battery because it was in a car that didn't get started or driven very often, and the thing got depleted and wouldn't charge up again. Sound familiar? Well, when you shop for a new battery for that car, consider a couple of things. One is to get one of these simple mechanical disconnect switches. By turning a knob, you actually physically disconnect the negative cable on the battery. That means it almost is impossible for it to discharge 
through phantom drain while sitting there connected to a car that may not get driven very often. Another way to accomplish this idea of battery preservation is not to disconnect it, but to actually connect it all the time to what's called a battery tender or a battery minder. This is basically a trickle charger with a little bit of intelligence in it that will monitor the battery's condition, and when it gets a little bit low, it'll give it a gradual charge to keep it topped up. Now, some folks have fear about fire hazard by keeping one of these connected all the time, and that's where your very simple mechanical disconnect is going to be some nice peace of mind. Okay, there's a quick primer on the outline of knowing, understanding, and buying batteries. We're going to do a how-to soon. It tells you how to put one of these things in. It is the easiest, most satisfying repair you can do on your car. Look for that soon. More car tech demystified right now at CNETOnCars.com. Click on CarTech 101.